Hey there, friends. How's it going? So as many of you know, I just finished up my Advanced Mystery Dungeon playthrough. Um, and if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and check that out. That was a really fun playthrough to do uh, over on my Twitch channel, which I, I finished uploading to, to YouTube recently. So the cool thing about Advanced Mystery Dungeon is it is a Red Rescue Team ROM hack. And I've been getting some questions about um, how people can potentially make their own ROM hacks. So that's what I wanted to show you today in this video. And all you need is two things. Uh, first and foremost, a copy of Red Rescue Team, either the US or European version, as well as a piece of software, which we'll talk about in a moment that I will link in the description down below. First things first, you do need a, a copy of the uh, Red Rescue Team ROM. Like I said, either US or European. And I'm not going to provide this for you. I, I trust you to find this on your own because uh, there's some potential legal issues if I am distributing links to these. So I, I wish you the best in finding that. I, I can't really help you with that. Uh, so I apologize for that. What I can help you with, though, is I will provide a link to um, this GitHub page in the description of the video where you can find PMD Editor. And this is the software I'll be using to, uh, to make our little miniature ROM hack. So you're going to go ahead and go to Releases. Then click on version 1.04, and you're going to download this RAR file. So hopefully you have WinRAR as well. And we're not paying for that. <laughs> so why don't we go ahead and create a folder that we can just uh, pull, put all this stuff in, call it PMD Editor, and then we'll just go ahead and drop it in. And just like that, you really have everything you need to, uh, to, to create a a ROM hack for PM, uh, Red Rescue Team. I, I would advise you make copies of this this clean ROM that you have um, and save the, the creations you make in this program as a different file so you uh, keep track of those. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go ahead and give this a shot. Open up our folder and we'll open this jar file, which is just called Mystery 2, and this is the program right here. So to access our ROM so we can start editing it, we're going to click File, then click Open, and then open up our copy of Red Rescue Team here. So now that we have this opened up, what we can do now is we can start editing the game files and start changing things uh, that we want. As you can see here, there's quite a bit of things that we can edit. Um, a couple of these things are quite buggy. Like for instance, um, editing items uh, can be a little iffy. I mean, there, there are some things like the items directly in the dungeons that appear that we can't edit. Um, but I'm going to go through some of the uh, the basic things you can do with this program. Um, and then as you spend more time with it, you'll find uh, some more cool tips and tricks you can you can do with it. So let's start by editing some dungeon data. This is the sort of meat and potatoes of this program, and it's where you're going to be spending a lot of your time sort of editing all of the dungeons uh, that are present in the game. This first tab here uh, refers to the dungeon layout. Um, and as you can see, each dungeon floor, for instance, right now we're in Tiny Woods, has its own dedicated layout number, um, as well as items number, but we'll get to that in just a second. So let's go ahead and uh, mess with our layout here a little bit. So we just opened layout number zero, which corresponds to floor one of Tiny Woods. If we look um, at Thunder Wave Cave, um, since there's only uh, three floors in Tiny Woods, uh, we're now looking at layout number three, which is going to be our first floor of Thunder Wave Cave. But th that's just to make make sure you understand that the these are just corresponding to the different layouts. But let's get back to the, the first floor of Tiny Woods. So what we can do is with these options up here is we can change some things about this dungeon. So first and foremost, let's uh, change this to some, uh, some better music. Let's put down Sky Tower Summit. Let's add some rain in on the first floor. And I'm not going to do anything for now with the visibility. The, this event tab is a little uh, little glitchy, so I, I usually steer clear of that. Um, nothing but trouble. And the next cool thing that we can do is we can change the tile set of the first floor so we can make it look like any uh, dungeon that we want. So I'm going to go for the Sky Tower look to sort of go with the theme we have going here. There we are. So that, that's a, a really cool cool thing you can edit. I, I love editing the tile sets in this program um, and then seeing what they look like. That's a, a really fun part of this. So what we've just done there is we've essentially just changed the, the aesthetic look of the dungeon um, as well as, as the music that's playing. 
So let's go ahead and exit out of this. You can do a whole lot more with this though. So just uh, keep that in mind. And if you have any questions about using the program, by all means, leave a comment and, and just let me know. So this is where the fun begins. So this is our Pokemon tab. And just as the dungeon layout um, number zero corresponded to the first floor of Tiny Woods, this Pokemon layout number zero also corresponds to this first floor. And with this tab right here, we can put in any Pokemon that we want to. So for instance, let's, since we are, we're going with a Sky Tower theme, I guess, let's find our, our friend Rayquaza that we just beat in the uh, Advanced Mystery Dungeon playthrough. Oh, there's Rayquaza. Let's give Rayquaza some friends. Let's go ahead and put in Groudon. And Kyogre. Just saw it. There we go. You will notice that Decoy and Kecleon are listed in pretty much every dungeon. This is just to ensure that um, whenever there is a Kecleon uh, shop tile present, that the Kecleon can, can properly spawn. And the decoy is for whenever you use a decoy orb, because that model has to be ready to, uh, to spawn in, I suppose, whenever you uh, spawn a decoy. So now we, we have uh, added some friends to our dungeon. We have Rayquaza, Groudon, and Kyogre on our first floor of, of Tiny Woods. This is getting to be quite scary. So you can edit any Pokemon you want, and you can also edit their levels, and more importantly, their probability chances of spawning. So right now it's all fairly equal. This number needs to add up to, uh, to 10,000, uh, these numbers rather. Uh, so just keep that in mind whenever you're, uh, you're editing the, uh, the game numbers. So let's go ahead and save that. We have our Pokemon now. Now we have traps. So with this, we can change the values or the probabilities uh, of different types of trap spawning. And just as before, this is uh, number zero, layout number zero for first floor of Tiny Woods. It goes up incrementally then um, for every other floor in the, in the game. So just make sure you don't get confused by that because again, number four is gonna be the first floor of, of Thunder Wave Cave and, and so on. So let's go ahead and make our wonder tile here a 0% chance. And since I'm feeling mean, let's make a, if I can get this right, the, the warp trap, a 100% possibility. So now we're only going to see uh, warp trap tiles um, in our little uh, nightmare run of uh, tiny woods. So let's go ahead and save that. Kecleon shop items and monster house um, items, we're not gonna worry about right now. Same thing with, with buried items. So just like that, we have edited this first floor of Tiny Woods into something pretty horrific. Um, and if we want to be really mean, we can change even more things. So down here, you can change the direction of the stairs. So whether they're going up or down. The item limit, as well as the party limit. Um, so let's. this timer is the number of steps that you can take in the dungeon before uh, you get uh, whisked out. Um, with the uh, the strange breeze or whatever. I don't even know how to describe that. It's such a creepy thing. And then here you can set to level one. So let's go ahead and do that for the memes. And then this will force a, a save, a quick save before a player enters the dungeon. And this is all self-explanatory. Do not mess with this. Nobody knows what it does. I don't even think the creator knows what it does. So just like that, we have our little uh, little tiny woods going on. So we'll we'll try that again in just a second. Here for Pokemon data, we can edit each individual Pokemon in the game. So you'll see here for Bulbasaur, we can edit what friend area it will appear in, what tiles I can walk on, um, its shadow size, its sprite size. Here we can edit its movement speed. Um, so for instance, if we were to crank this up, here it, auto be, it would always be at double speed, triple speed, quadruple speed, etc. I, I would use this very sparingly because if you use it too much, you're going to be creating a lot of Pokemon that are very, very overpowered. But since we're trying to create like this nightmare shadow realm tiny woods, let's go ahead and find our friend Rayquaza. Let's crank his movement speed up just a little bit. So this will let Rayquaza attack multiple times each turn. 
And because we're really, really going to just ruin our hopes and dreams, let's add in some uh, some abilities here that Rayquaza doesn't normally have. Let's give him Shadow Tag. And then let's also give him Drizzle. Well, I guess Kyogre already has Drizzle, so let's find something else. We could give him Wonder Guard. Let's give Rayquaza Wonder Guard. I just saw it. There we go. So now Rayquaza has Wonder Guard. Here you can change the Pokemon stats. Um, just think a lot about balancing before you do that, because again, the goal is to create something fun, not not something broken. And I mean, in this case, we're going for broken because that's that's fun. But and then here you can change um, its color palette. Um, so let's go ahead and change this to something random. I don't know what this will look like. It'll look weird, but we'll change it. And then as well as its recruitment factor. So. Those are the basic things you can mess with in, in Pokemon data. The moves are quite similar. This is just a, a screen that will allow you to, to change certain things about the moves. For instance, uh, let's take the move Bubble, for instance. Um, so foes in a line means that Bubble can essentially hit any target that's in a straight line. If you wanted to, you could make Bubble affect every Pokemon in the room, all except the user. There's lots of different options here um, for the moves. I'm not going to get too much into this, but there's some really cool balancing things on these moves that you can you can do. And then friend areas obviously is going to change the the prices, unlock conditions, um, the number of Pokemon it can hold, um, and that that's fairly straightforward. I, I typically don't mess with this too much in my my ROM hack making. And then that's that's pretty much all that's usable. You can also mess with uh, the Poke factors. I, I haven't done too much of this, so I don't know exactly how it works. Um, but if you have any questions about it, I'm sure I could figure it out and uh, and sort of help you you make use of that in your own ROM hacks. I I would avoid the edit the editing the starters and partners. I've found that there's a lot of game crashes that happen when you do this um, because some Pokemon don't have the proper animations. And it can it can ultimately just cause way too much trouble. All right, and I guess one last thing I can talk about is the map coordinates. So, for instance, we want we have Tiny Woods right here. Um, this would just allow us to change where that dot takes us. So let's go ahead and crank the Y up to five hundred. Why not? Is that going to work? No, I don't think that's going to work. How about 300? Yeah, there we go. Now Tiny Woods is is down right here on this this little coast. Uh, just a little fun thing to mess with. It's it's not important for the, the game itself. And then lastly, editing exclusive Pokemon. You can just have these unlocked by default, um, or you can just remove them. Th this is not really a, a huge thing for, for ROM hack making. Uh, one thing that I just completely forgot to talk about was the editing items tab. This this part works just fine. It's the uh, when you try to edit in the uh, the dungeon data that doesn't work. Work. So here, you, uh, the the most fun thing I've found to do is is changing the color palette of different items to try and make them unique. Um, as you saw in Advanced Mister Dungeon, the Reviver seeds were actually red. Um, so let's go ahead and find Reviver seeds, and I'll show you how to go ahead and do that. There we go. There's our Reviver Seed. So here we can change this uh, this little uh, scroll thing. I don't know what to call this. Um, and you'll notice that as we do that, it'll scroll through different colors um, on this preview thing right here for the sprite. Um, and if we're, we're feeling feisty, we could even change what type of item icon it has. We can make the Reviver Seed a purple orb if we felt so inclined, if we wanted to make things really wacky. We could make it a Reggie part, we could make it a, a gummy, we could make it even a, a, a black banana. <laughs> the, the, uh, the possibilities here are endless. And then here we can change what it'll sell for in Kecleon shops, where it'll appear in storage, what type it is. Um, just I, I would recommend keeping a very comprehensive list of all the things you change here for these items because it can be very, very difficult to to, to do. One thing I, I enjoy doing with this color change feature is going down to each of the TMs and coloring them uniquely based on their type. So for instance, let's see, we have Toxic here. 
So Toxic's a poison type move. We could make it this purple TM look um, and and really sort of add to the, uh, I don't know, the depth of things and, and really make it consistent with that and then change all the other TMs. So this is the the tab to do that. It, it is quite useful. Um, again, w what's broken um, is in the dungeon data, you can't edit, edit items in this directly. So keep that in mind. So now that we've done all of that, let's go ahead and save our ROM file. So we have our clean copy here. I would recommend renaming this to something. Let's just do ROM hack. And we'll go ahead and save this to our desktop. And from here, you can close the program. We don't really need it anymore. Let's go ahead and try our little abomination here that we've just made. So we'll go ahead and run this. I'm going to speed through the opening just so we can get to, to Tiny Woods quickly. Oh, cool, we got Psyduck. I butchered Charmander's name, but that's not going to matter too much. So now we're about to, to enter our Tiny Woods hellscape that we made. So hopefully this is a, will be a good demonstration of everything we changed. So here's the quick save that we, uh, we set it up to do. We have the music now. And we have Kyogre right here. I don't think we'll be able to even touch this. Yeah, one damage. <laughs> and then instantly taken out by a water pulse. Let's go through a couple more times and see what else we can see. See if we can find Groudon or Rayquaza. Because we changed Rayquaza's palette quite a bit, I think. Okay, so it didn't do anything, but... And the movement speed doesn't seem to be doing much, but... Again, that's just something to... Uh, maybe I didn't save it right. We'll go through one more time, see if we can find Groudon to, to finish our little our little trio. I think that was another Kyogre I just saw, so. But yeah, as you can see, friends, this is like an extremely, extremely powerful tool to make whatever you want in the game happen, essentially. Um, so obviously, I'm not going to be able to get through this 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 dungeon, so we're going to call it there. Um, but yeah, I, I have had so much fun messing around with this and just creating ridiculous situations, ridiculous dungeons, and I, I hope you guys have the same same amount of fun as I did. All right, friends, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed and think this will help you in your sort of creative adventures and making ROM hacks, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. Um, what I would love for everybody to do, though, is to join the Discord server. And when you do make your ROM hacks, share them with me. Because if, if something great comes out of this, I might very well just do a playthrough of it on the channel. Um, and I can give you some good feedback about it as well. So yeah, any any ROM hacks you'd make, I would love to see. So just send them my way through the, the Discord server. If you guys have any more questions about making ROMs, again, you know where to find me, the comments, the Discord server. And and yeah, that's all I all I have. Thank you so much for watching, friends. I will see you in the next video.